intrigue. Now with the release of Transformers 2 Revenge of the Fallen, we have someone who actually worked on conceptual design of Transformers 1. We have Feng Zhu. Hey, what's up, guy? Nice okay, to meet you. so um, my first question to you is, what is your experience in the whole industry? How do you become a conceptual designer? Okay, well, I started by drawing a lot when I was a kid, and I knew this is something I wanted to go to. So I actually chose a school back in Los Angeles called Art Center. And that school is pretty much an industrial design school. They're known for designing cars, products, but the years I was there, they had started the entertainment design track. And as soon as I saw what they were offering, it's like, that's the school I want to be in. So I went from that school and uh, yeah, eventually got a job. I've been working in it for about now almost 13 years now, doing all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Okay, so what would you say is a conceptual designer? Okay, conceptual design, I think the core of it is a problem solver. Someone who could come up with something that doesn't yet exist, and that's a very difficult job. You know, oftentimes they're staring at a white piece of paper and your client wants something really cool, they're paying you money for it, and they want something no one has seen. That is our job. So essentially we're, we're solving these difficult problems. Uh, I don't consider myself an artist at all. Uh, I'm a designer, which means it's a product person. You, you, you're making products. Uh, so it's a completely different role than art, right? Because art, you, you kind of sell, you, you make, you draw, things like that. What we do, the drawing itself, it actually has no value. Whereas a comic book, the drawing actually does have value. What we do is actually come up with stuff in our heads. And whatever that is, it's going to eventually make into a product that makes cash for somebody. Now that be a movie, a game, a blockbuster film, whatever it is. So we're actually designers. Besides film, what other industries can a conceptual designer get into? Oh, there are tons. I mean, if you could design well, then you could get actually get into any industry. Uh, myself included, I've worked on everything across the board from, you know, Universal Studio type things, you know, theme park design, to films, to games, to commercials, to fashion, to toys, to cars, I mean, you name it. Because at the end of the day, we're solving problems, and therefore you can enter, enter into any field. There's actually no one thing that you could uh, you know, branch yourself into. You could go into anything. This phrase, you gotta learn the rules before you break the rules. Does it apply to conceptual design? Oh, definitely, I think. There's a lot of fundamentals. I and mean, that's what my school here is for as well. It's all about the fundamentals. You know, the way I like to phrase it is always, um, you know, there's a lot of schools that shit say that teaches almost the reverse, which is the rendering, the art, that part. The way, good way to look at it is like, uh, you can always take a car, like a Ferrari. You can strip all the paint off of this car, you know, paint the ugliest thing ever. But you go on the racetrack, it's still a Ferrari. But you cannot take a bad car, put Ferrari red on it, paint the gorgeous paint job, and expect it to perform like Ferrari. That's the key difference. There's a lot of back end stuff in a lot of schools that I experienced myself, not just in Asia, but all over the world, that kind of teaches rendering and how to draw well. That's all the paint, that's all the layer. But the fundamentals, if you know how to build a Ferrari engine, you, could, you don't even have to paint it, it'll still be good. That's what a good designer is, and that requires a strong, solid foundation. So after I came out of Singapore, well, it's a great country, there's a lot of talented people all over Asia. However, they just lack the fundamental skill. If you combine technique with fundamentals, you put it together, you get the guys out of you know, the states in Europe that are very powerful. So that was a strong motivation for me to actually start in Singapore. I think the talent is definitely here. But like I said earlier, the fundamental is lacking, the experience. That takes time, and that takes something like a school to teach it to you. Because design, uh, there's a lot of schools in Singapore, but as far as teaching entertainment design goes and teaching how to get into films and games, there's not that many. And what I'm here to do is really focus this education towards that kind of uh, industry because it is getting huge. You know, Singapore in general is still, I think, quite behind, uh, you know, compared to the rest of the world of where design is, where entertainment is. But you can tell the government is very behind it. And when you have support, that's a good sign because that means the industry is going to grow.